You don't want to be that. Imagine you spend thousands of dollars on a backyard shade trying to get some sort of respite from the sun, and it doesn't make you cooler. It actually does the opposite. It becomes a space heater. That's what we're going to talk about today, is louvered pergolas, the louver shape, and why it's important. If you've been looking at buying a louvered pergola or motorized roof, it goes by a bunch of different names. Basically, it's the best of a pergola, you know, the thing with the slats, and a solid roof, closed tight, in one product. It just opens and closes, gives you a lot of different options. But if you've been looking in that space for a while, you may have noticed that those louvers or slats come in a lot of different shapes and sizes. So it's reasonable to think, when you're looking at these, does it really matter? Does it make a difference? Why do we have all these different shapes? Do I really care? The answer is yes, it makes a huge difference. So there are four things a louver design contributes to. The first being water drainage, so how well does water come off the louver? Second being sealing, how well does one louver seal to the next to make sure water doesn't get through them? Strength, how much does the louver bend or not in inclement weather? And heat transfer, how much heat from the top of the louver makes it to the bottom and then radiates down onto you. First, let's start with drainage. So the louver shape, you wanna have something that's generally convex, so the water hits it, goes into two channels, and then drains into the internal gutter system. A concave louver can work, but part of the problem is, when compared to a convex, it's gonna hold a lot more water on top of it. When it holds more water, what does that mean? It means it may not drain out as easily, and with that extra weight, the louver's gonna bow, which means you get puddles. So when you go to open that louver, what's gonna happen? It's gonna look like you're at a water park and everybody's gonna get that bucket dumped on them. So if you have a completely flat louver, generally that's not gonna be the best option and we don't see a whole lot of those. What we tend to see is stuff that's either a U shape, a W shape, or it's gonna have a section that is that convex shape we were talking about and then a big channel in the middle. Again, that's a chance for pooling, puddling, and a potential nasty surprise when you go to open it after a storm. The second point is sealing. So how well do those louvers connect or interlock with each other? Under heavy rain, you don't have to worry about just the rain hitting, but when it splashes back up. So how do we address that splash? The first, is there some sort of overlap between the louvers? This is like 101 stuff, bare minimum. One louver needs to overlap the other one. If it doesn't, what's gonna happen is right where those two louvers meet, water's gonna pour on through. So bare minimum, do they overlap? Now that's easy. Next, we get into how does that overlap work? Is it just two pieces of metal straight up and down going on top of each other? If so, you may have some surprises in a heavy rain. With ours, we did something a little different and this is just an example. So with ours, we have a positive angle on one side that aims in towards that convex part of the louver that we were talking about. This is designed to make sure water doesn't splash up. If it does though, we'd have a positive weather seal from the other louver, which is weather stripping, similar to what you'd see in sliding windows, just to make sure that water doesn't get up through that bend over the bulb and down onto you. Now, not everybody uses a weather strip, not everybody uses a positive seal. It really comes down to how it's being used. We found that with the weather stripping, it gives us a lot of advantages. It's really long lasting and it's super easy to replace if you need to. There are a bunch of other applications, different people do different things, but some kind of sealing is really important when you look at how the louvers interlock. Number three is gonna be strength. So why is strength important? We kind of touched on it a little bit with the water pooling. So when the water pools up on top of the louver, does it bend? Some actually bend under their own weight before there's water or snow or anything on them. This is called deflection. So when you have a really, really thin piece of metal, it's going to bend and deflect. The shape is not a huge factor when you're doing louvers like this because the length and the weight of the metal is going to outstrip the strength of the shape almost every time. Now you can make things a little bit stronger with the shape, but the thickness of the metal is going to be the number one factor in how that louver behaves as far as bending, strength, and deflection goes. Now we're gonna show you two louvers right here. So one you can see is significantly thinner than the other. Now you know which one's ours because why would I show you this? Ours is gonna be the thicker version. Now why is it thicker? The reason is strength. When the wind blows, we don't want that louver to bend or chatter or move. And when you get snow, wind, rain, whatever, we want those louvers to stay solid so water doesn't get in between them. So when you're looking at strength of the louver, look for two things. 
One, a dual wall. So the more metal, the better. So do you have a wall on top and a wall on bottom? We'll get into why that is important as far as heat transfer goes in the next section. But for strength, the two walls are really, really important. The second is going to be how thick is that metal? The really, really thin stuff, it is going to be cheaper, absolutely. I mean, look, you're paying for a lot less metal. But how is it going to behave in inclement weather? If you live in a place that gets more than 50, 60 mile an hour winds at any point, you're gonna to wanna to make sure that those don't chatter on you. Now we're gonna go into heat transfer, the fourth contributing factor. So heat transfer comes down to how does the heat transfer from the top when the sun's beating down on it to the bottom. Now, why is this important? You wanna make sure that when you're buying something to keep you cool or give you shade, that you're actually getting something that keeps you cool and not getting a space heater over your head. So if you think about how a radiator works, the way a radiator works is the coils get really hot and then that heat radiates out into the room. Very similar principle with a louvered pergola. When the top gets hot, you wanna make sure as little heat transfers to the bottom as possible so you don't have a space heater over you. Now there are two things to worry about here. One, is it a dual wall? So with ours, we have three air chambers, we have a dual wall, a lot of really good tech in there. And additionally, our dual wall extends farther along the louver than I think anybody else in the industry. Now it's gotta meet, the two walls have to meet at some point, but we've minimized that space as much as possible. So with that air chamber, it works very similar to a thermos or a cooler. You know, one temperature on one side, another temperature on the other. So when you're looking at louvers, make sure that one's got a dual wall, and two, that that dual wall extends as far as possible. Otherwise, you may inadvertently be purchasing a space heater instead of something that keeps you cooler in the sun. And we did some thermal tests of our own. We put a heat source on one end where the top of the louver would be and use a thermal camera on the other end to see what that heat transfer looked like. Now the results pretty much speak for themselves. The thinner one heated up faster despite the dual walls and transferred more heat. The single wall louver behaved exactly how we thought it would and our dual wall louver definitely had the best performance of them all. Now in summary, you wanna focus on four main things. Drainage, how does water get off of the louvers? Sealing, how do the louvers connect or seal with one another? Strength, how much is this going to bend or not in inclement weather? And four, heat transfer. How much heat is going to transfer from the sun or the top of the louvers down to those wonderful residents below? Thanks for watching. And if you want to get any more info on outdoor products, manufacturing in the States, uh, outdoor DIY stuff, please make sure to like, comment, subscribe, hit that bell icon, and I will see you in the next one. Thanks for watching.